We had the previous discriminant video where I posed you a few questions based on the theory and the material we'd looked at beforehand. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to work through those questions and I'm going to show you the solutions to them, how we come about them and what they mean. Here's a reminder of those questions for you. First off, what kind of roots do the following quadratics have? So I've got 6x squared plus x minus 7, that's A. B is 2x squared plus x plus 8. And C is 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. And the second question was, what range of values or value of P in the quadratic x squared plus 5x plus 6 plus P equals 0 do we need to have if we want the function to have one repeated root, two distinct roots, or no roots? So we're going to look at all three of those one after the other. So let's start with these. So what kind of roots do the following quadratics have? Remember, to look at that, we need the discriminant. So we need b squared minus 4ac. And there were the three different scenarios for that. Let's have a look at how each of these works out. So for b squared minus 4ac, I need to identify a, b, and c first. And remember, they were the coefficients of the different parts of the function. So for the quadratic, the coefficient of x squared was a, coefficient of x was b, and then the constant at the end was c on its own. So I know what a, b, and c is from this, and I can then just substitute them into the formula. So I know b squared minus 4ac in this case is going to be 1 squared, take away 4, times 6, times negative 7. So 1 squared is equal to 1, take away 4 times 6 times negative 7 gives me negative 168. So minus minus becomes a plus, so I get 1 plus 168, so 169. It's quite obvious. That's bigger than 0, so therefore I get two real roots. Remember, if it's bigger than 0, I get two real roots. Second one, 2x squared plus x plus 8. Again, we start by identifying the a, the b, and the c. We can't do anything if we don't know those. We can't do anything if we don't identify those correctly. We then stick them into the formula, so b squared minus 4ac. So for this one, a is 2, b is 1, c is 8, so we stick them in the formula. So I get 1 squared, take away 4, times 2, times 8. Working each of these parts out, I'm able to then identify what I'm going to get for b squared minus 4ac. 1 squared, that's just 1. Take away 4 times 2 times 8. Well, 4 times 2 times 8 gives me 64. 1 take away 64 gives me negative 63, which is obviously less than 0. Now remember, less than 0 means I get 0 real roots. There's no real roots in this case doesn't touch the x-axis at all. Now we could go into complex imaginary roots, but that's not at a higher level mathematics. Last one, 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. Again, we can identify the a, the b, and the c. So in this case, the a is my 3, b is my 6, and my c is also 3. And then we just plug them in. So I get b squared minus 4ac, put the values in. I get 6 squared, take away 4, times 3, times 3. 6 squared is 36. 4 times 3 times 3, 3 threes are 9, 4 nines are also 36, 36 take away 36 equals 0. So in this case, I get one repeated root. What this means then for the graph is that it's going to touch the x-axis and no more. So the first one, two real roots, it's going to look something like that, it's going to cut the x-axis twice. No real roots, it's not going to go anywhere near it, so it'll be floating above it or below it. And then one repeated root. What it's going to do is just come down and touch the x-axis and go away. That's how they're going to look. Roughly, that's how they're going to look. We can calculate ex more exact values using the quadratic formula to find any solutions where the solutions exist. So, that's the kind of roots we have. Let's imagine we go into the second one now. So, the second one was, what values of p give me each of these versions? So, one repeated root, two distinct roots, and no roots at all. Well, for these, we have to remember the three conditions. So the one repeated root, we have to remember b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Two distinct roots, b squared minus 4ac has to be bigger than 0. And no roots at all, b squared minus 4ac has to be less than 0. So first thing we should figure out for all three of these is what the form of b squared minus 4ac is. So in this one, a is our x squared coefficient, which is 1. b is our x coefficient, which is 5. And C is the constant on the end. Now we have to include this whole part here in the constant. Yes, this is a variable, P, but it's not the dependent variable for our function. The dependent variable is X. So P, 
we can treat it almost like a constant if we want, but we do still have to bear in mind it is a variable. It will have some effect later on. Plug all of these into the formula. I write 5 squared, take away 4, times 1, times the 6 plus p in a bracket. 5 squared, <coughs> 25, take away 4, bracket 6 plus p. Multiply out this whole bracket here, and at 25, take away 4 sixes, 24, minus 4p. Minus 4 into there gives me minus 4p. Simplify it down, I get 1, take away 4p. So that there is my discriminant in terms of p. That there is what I get for that. So now I have to look at each of these conditions. So we'll take it to the first one. So 1 repeated root, b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So in this case I know 1 minus 4p equals 0. So I can then just do basic algebra and jig it about. I know 4p equals 1, so p equals a quarter. So if p was equal to a quarter in this function originally, and this whole bit here simplified to 6 and a quarter, I would get one repeated root from a quadratic. For two distinct roots, I know the b squared minus 4c has to be bigger than 0, so plug this in, and I know 1 taken with 4p has to be bigger than 0. Again, manipulate it about. I know 4p has to be less than 1, just shifting over here. So I then know that p has to be less than a quarter. So if the value of p is less than a quarter, what we would then get is two distinct roots. So say I set p equal to 0, and I had x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, I'd get two distinct roots for that one. For no roots, same sort of idea, except this case, my 1 minus 4p would be less than 0 to start. So again, manipulate the whole thing around with algebra. 4p is bigger than 1 in this case, so p is bigger than a quarter. So in this case, if p was anything bigger than a quarter, so let's say it was 1, and I made that x squared plus 5x plus 7 equals 0, I would have no roots. It wouldn't touch the x-axis at all, and it would float above it somewhere. We can use these properties to calculate these sorts of things. This is quite a common thing to be asked to calculate. Depending on where the variable p would be sitting, so if it was a coefficient of maybe x squared, or more specifically as well, x, this would have an effect, because if it was a coefficient of x, we'd have the variable squared here. So we'd end up with a p squared. So we could then get positive and negative values. So we have to be aware of things like that. And we have to think what those could mean for our function. Hope they, hope they went well for you.